Hey guys, it's Mark here from ETF Tracker, and today we're looking at a couple of small cap ETFs. So I'm going to go to my screen here on the ETF Tracker app, and as you can see, that is the app embedded on the page. You can click the button to go full screen. So the two we're looking at today, one is IJR, and the other one is VSO. So the IJR one is from iShares, and it's the S&P small cap ETF. And we can see here it's a small cap 600, so uh, 613 companies in it. And we can see that the description is that the fund aims to provide uh, investors with the performance of the S&P small cap 600 before fees and expenses. The index is designed to measure the performance of small capitalization in US equities. And if we look at the companies that are in there, you can see the weights are already quite small there. So usually where we see like across the 180 or so ETFs that we have uh, all these holdings for, there's about 240 in total, but the others, they, they're either active and it's hard to get the uh, ETF holdings or there might be some passive ones and yeah, we, we still have to add those. But in, in any case, the average of the weighting of the top 10 across most ETFs is around 44 40 to 47%. This is only 6.4%, so it's even weighted. It's not market cap weighted. Or maybe it is market cap weighted, but yeah, these guys are just so so small there compared to the rest of what's going on in the US. But anytime you see something like this where it's much more even like that, it does tend towards that like more even um, rather than market cap weighted. So yeah, worth a look at there. So that is interesting. It's a, got a nice spread, which could just be a natural cause uh, based on its constituents. But we can see here performance uh, up to 76% in terms of cumulative. It's been around since before um, 2017. So the data starts at 2017. That's when we get the Excel files and PDFs from the ASX and CHI-X starts in 2019. But 1.5% returns more recently. Let's look at the profile there. So it's been very positive, um, except for a couple of downturn moments in 2020. It's been mostly positive in 2020. Uh, 21 and we can see that performance there that's why there's that big dip uh, last year in March so it really fell in Feb March last year and then in terms of size it's 434 million it uh, had 20, nearly 20 million 19 million in terms of inflows it's been more positive in the last couple of months it's been really flat so there's been a lot more buyers into it in 2021 so that's interesting you can see there the curve upwards uh, in terms of funds under management and if we take a look at transactions, we can actually see that there too. So there is a lot more, there's a lot more trades and transaction volume and transaction value in more recent months. And yeah, so that is that is pretty interesting. So this one looks like it's something that is on the radars of investors, whether it's institutional or retail traders. So that's interesting there. The spread, which was uh, around that 0.5% mark has come well down in more recent periods as it's being traded more, which is great. It means it's more easily changing hands. And liquidity, it says there is 6.2% of the profile we can see here is, yeah, it's it's stayed around the under 10% mark. It's had some higher periods uh, more recently, but as long as um, you've got a high enough uh, kind of liquidity, you probably want to compare that to its peers rather than on its own. And we'll do something there on that. And so here we can see uh, the spread is going down. So that's good. And then is there dividend, is there distributions? And it's hardly any, the latest is 0.76. It averages about 1.1% and you can see that profile over time. And it's MER is quite low, although it has risen to 0.09%. And so that's that one there. The other one we were asked to look at is VSO. And as you can see here, it's the Miski small cap in, and this is Australian focused. Okay. So it's equity Australia, small to mid cap. So the other one was us. This is Australia and it focuses on 192 holdings there. So you can see here companies like Charter Hall, Oz Minerals, Mineral Resources, IDP Resources, Car Sales. Um, and you can see the market uh, value here of that. And this is the weight percentage. So it's mostly, uh, well, the top 10 makes up 17%. So still below the average that we see across most ETFs. Not sure if you want to use like that average as your benchmark there, but you know, you could do that. And so you can see some of the other companies at the smaller end of the scale there. 
let's go back and we'll take a look at performance. So this one has been around as well since before 2017. Performance is similar actually, even though there was a negative performance in the latest month of September, it's 71.2% uh, there in terms of adding up all those one month total returns. One month total returns are the price change as well as uh, dividends and other things being uh, redistributed back into the fund. So that is interesting there. It's almost double the size. So it was 380, this is 640 in total farms. So that's almost there in terms of doubling that size, which is interesting. Transactions wise, it has been increasing. I didn't see what the transactions were on IJR, but it was tending to grow upwards. So let's just go back to the returns and we can see here what the profile is. It also fell in Feb and March, okay? But the, um, the returns profile here is quite similar to the US one and the net inflows. Let's take a look at that one. So we can see it's been, um, it hasn't had like the massive kind of dip out uh, of outflows basically like the other one had. So it's just been trending upwards quite nicely. There was a little bit of outflows in March last year, but not too bad. And then in terms of the transactions, the uh, transaction volume, transaction value, the, the IJR one had a lot more kind of, um, you know, pull in, it, it was higher in 2021 for both its volume and value. But uh, in this one, it is higher, but that's not its record month. So um, March, oh, actually November, 2019 was the highest on record for uh, volume and value. That could have been in institutional, it could have been retail traders. I highly would say that because, you know, re retail traders only really, not only, but it was really more popular and in the news and far widespread in 2020. So I would think that that's probably institutional right there. Institutional being um, banks, hedge funds, uh, pension funds, superannuation, all that kind of stuff. Bid off spread 0.12%. Uh, it is, I think a little bit higher or maybe it's the same as uh, the other one, but it has been trending. Uh, actually has been kind of flat. So it actually got higher. So it was a bit harder to uh, see buyers and sellers coming together on those trades, but seems like it has these periods of where it's high, then it settles down as high, then it settles down. So that's interesting there. Um, monthly liquidity, it's around that 4.55% uh, mark. So yeah, you want to compare this to its peers. There's, um, the sector that it's in, this Australia small mid cap, there's other uh, ETFs in that for Australia and also globally. And so you can see here that Vanguard, Miski Australian Small Companies Index uh, seeks to track the return of the Miski Australian Shares Small Cap Index. And you can look that up. Um, you can look it up to see the performance of that index further, because if it's passively tracking, then you can see that if, you know, it was around much longer, how would it have returned uh, over that longer period of time? And the other interesting things are the distribution yield. It's got a higher distribution yield on this one. So if you're after that more regular kind of income, you are going to be better off with something like this. Whereas uh, IJR just hardly returns. It does return something, but it's a much smaller fraction and it's 0.3%. So it is more expensive. The other one uh, is 0.09% for the uh, IJR one. But uh, yes, so this one is a little bit more, but it they cover different markets. So IJR versus the US, although the returns profile is quite similar. Another thing you can do here, if you're looking at two ETFs like that. So this button that we clicked on for Google actually takes us to the Google finance page. And from here, we can actually try to compare it. I mean, it's not in the same kind of market. They cover quite different things, but if I type in IJR there, I can click on uh, that to see how the comparisons look. That's over six months. Here's year to date, very different year to date. So that is interesting. Um, and this is in terms of, this is just price returns. So even though the total returns are quite similar there, adding up all the one month returns that the ASX and JIX get from Bloomberg, it's different in terms of the price returns. So that's distributions. That's the, that's the difference that comes up with there. And then we can see here um, a bit more. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's worth looking at too. And you can go to each of the funds pages as well if you want to learn some more information. So we haven't done that in a while, clicking on the fund website page. So this one's going to Vanguard. The other one is iShares. Shout out to those guys. Uh, and when this loads, so it's probably my computer, you can see here the details. Vanguard's got a great page. You can see the portfolio here. They break it down in terms of the characteristics. So this is um, all the number of holdings and other kind of ratios on that. Sector allocation is here as well. And then you've also got the holdings details. And if you wanna see this one as a chart, 
you can do that there. You can see um, uh, the nav versus the benchmark here. And so that should be quite the same. And then the holdings, you can view some of the, the holdings here. This is like the top, I don't know, 15 or so there. And you can export that to CSV if you wanna do some further work. Now we do holdings analysis in our tool as well. So if you wanted to compare holdings, I mean, those two are not really comparable because they're not, they're not the same really, right? So one is in um, the equity small caps. So this one here, equity small caps are under Equity Australia. If we click on that, we can see these uh, these ones here. So VSO is what we looked at. So it'll be in the table. So you can see VSO's profile here. There's the X20, ISO, MVE. You can see how it compares against all of those. And what you've got here is another table is what's the weight of the top 10 holdings. So VSO is here, 17%. MVE, which is the Vanek Vectors S&P uh, small mid cap 50, that is its top 10 is showing is 31% uh, of the total weight of that ETF. So yeah, that's that's worth a look at as well. So that's those ones. You can do the same thing for the US um, or the global. So it actually isn't just US, uh, right? So hang on, let's get out of that one. If we go to global, it is broken down into, oh, okay, we, we don't have small mid cap. Okay, so we follow what the ASX and TriX has there. So even though there is this small mid cap kind of ETF, it fits into one of these kind of categories. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Um, if you are interested in more of this analysis, either the head to heads or something else, please give us a shout. Uh, please do like, share and subscribe this video. If you're listening on Insta, just, you know, subscribe um, or follow. I mean, I've got to get the lingo right. I'm still getting used to all of this. All right. So thank you very much. It's Saturday morning. I hope you guys are out having a fun day. I'm going to go see the folks for the first time in a couple of months, which is, you know, feeling blessed to be able to do that. But yeah, have a great day and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.